Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. I've been kind of doing some research and I want to kind of see if we can modify the Redivus RT97 repeater with a uh, DB9 data connector. I know you can buy some already done. I'm aware of that. But I like to see if, if it can be done, uh, you know, without having to uh, purchase one that's already done. So, before I get in this video, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm just, you know, brainstorming. Do not do what I'm going to talk about until I can confirm it. Um, I got to do some testing. So, I'm just mentioning that now. I don't want people doing stuff and then they, oh, you know. Oh. So, I'm just telling you right now, this is brainstorming. There's a lot to this. Um, you know, you, you got to have a little bit of knowledge of electronics. Um, you just can't go jump, you know, put in jumper wires in your unit. You got to have current uh, limiting resistors uh, added, either 1K, 10K. So that's all got to be figured out. But this is just a brainstorming video. So I want to mention that now so I don't get a thousand comments. Uh, people getting all excited. So any rate let's get that out of the way now here's the beauty about um, when any product is introduced to the public they have to file for an FCC license so I can look up stuff before I even take it apart so if I'll post all these links in the, de in the description below so you can see for yourself if you go to the FCC website you can look up the uh, Redivus RT97. Now, I did try to email the company and ask for a schematic, and of course, they don't want me having that because they don't want people to modify its a trade secret, you know, whatever you want to call it. So, if you look this up, they do have on their website user's manual, test setup, test report, RF exposure internal f uh, photos label blah 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 schematic not there parts list not there tune up not there block diagram not there but that's okay we're gonna reverse engineer this so let's go to internal photos so we click on that link and there's a PDF file that you can download so we're gonna download that PDF file now, I could pull my Redivus repeater apart, and I will because i got to do testing of this. But we're going to do it this way just so I can see what type of chips and components are in this unit. So after kind of playing around and looking at this, and what I mean by playing around is, let's go ahead and zoom in. If you zoom in, hopefully here I can get this. You can, you know, zoom in. I'm doing this not on my good laptop making this video, but you'll get the point. You can zoom in and you can read the chip numbers that are on the chip. So uh, let me go ahead and so if you zoom in, if and if you have a pretty decent computer, you can actually read the chip numbers that are on each particular IC or chip as some people call it so I went through and I looked through all of them and I came across and let's see if I can do this as I was doing this I came across a chip after I punched it in on Google the part numbers I came across a chip that was interesting let's see if I can find it here right here this chip right here is very very interesting um, this might be possibly the answer to what we're looking for um, let me go ahead and this chip right here now the beauty of the internet is that if you punch that in and you cross-reference it you'll get data sheets and the data sheets will tell you the pinouts on this chip so let's go ahead and go to a data sheet after um, crossing this 
it seems this part number AT 1846S crosses over to an let's go ahead and click on the data sheet crosses over to a RD1846 okay so this is what we want to see we want to see what are these pins what what is this chip well just by looking at it here um, I see some interesting things I see Mike in and I see AF out so let's go ahead and scroll through this data data sheet oh look at that it's for uh, walkie talkies uh, different frequencies as we are well aware of um, this chip can be programmed the power that needs to run the chip is right here so let's scroll down and it gets you know, a lot of good stuff I'm not going to go into every detail but we're going to go to some of the interesting details here so I'm going to scroll down and we got electrical characteristics and then we're going to keep going down and like I say you can read this more in depth and then we get to the pinouts now the black dot on the chip is going to indicate pin 1 FYI so this is how the pinout is on the chip so what do these pinouts mean well there's a luckily there's a little chart here that tells us so if we look at this chart we can see oh look at that mic input huh that's interesting pin number 11 hmm let's see we got RF out that's interesting pin 18 hmm that's interesting now if we go to these these are address lines this chip is hooked up to a CPU or a uh, or a computer chip I guess try to explain this in easy terms um, another chip controls this chip so I'm looking at these we got Vox squelch right there transmit on receive on oh wait a minute transmits on huh that pin is really interesting and it looks like it requires to turn it on with electronic digital electronics you got logic and logic is high is 5 volts when you tie a pin high to a power supply as long as it's 5 volts that is high they call that a high state when you tie it to ground it's a low state okay now you just don't be taking jumper wires um, yeah technically you could but that's not really recommended you should have what they call a current limiting resistor in there usually it's between 1k or 10k um, but at any rate that's a whole nother thing so this right here is telling me if I want to turn the transmit on I need this pin to go high or else it's low in its normal state so if I tied that pin theoretically do not do this because I have to get the meters, the scope, and everything else to see if this is the case. But if I measure that with my repeater, I solder a wire onto it, I hook it to a voltmeter, I key up the radio, and if it goes high, well then that's probably, you know, probably a good indication that I am correct on this. But like I said, I'm just brainstorming out loud with you guys so do not do any of this until we figure out exactly what's going on so that's interesting um, that that is have to be high so then if you scroll down more they give you like a example usage application diagram now this does not mean this is how it exactly is hooked up in the red of his RT 97 but this kind of gives you an idea of what pins do what in a little more detail so speaker out AF out pin mic in which could be controlled by a Vox detection circuit would be the mic input so basically what I'm trying to say is most likely and I, and I cannot say a hundred percent because I don't have the red of us model that has the DB9 connector in front of me most likely they probably took the uh, 
they added some cables to the wire and to these pins and hooked them up to the uh, DB9 connector. Is there another circuit involved? Very well could possibly be. But this is might be where they're starting from to be able to have a data connector on the Redivis RT97. Um, and what I mean by data connector is a, a nine pin connector that you can plug in um, other devices. For an example, you could plug in a interface box and have it work with Zello or any other um, gateway applications. Um, because most likely uh, you're going to need a audio pin. You're going to need uh, what I mean by audio pin is you're going to need a speaker out pin, you're going to need a mic input pin, you're going to need a ground pin, and you're going to need a PTT pin. And that PTT pin is like as if you were pushing the little mic button. So mo most likely you're going to need those pins to be able to work with a interface box to have it hooked up to uh, a computer. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, computers don't have those ports no more. That is correct. Most computers don't. But the good news is you can go on eBay and buy a USB to DB9 connector for I don't know eight nine dollars free shipping. So just to let you know that. So any rate, um, this is kind of like I said. This is kind of an application here. Um, this particular chip is programmable. There, I do have data on how to program the chip. This is how they set the frequencies. If you go here, it tells you if the bit is high, then you'll get you know these you know frequencies or these bands. Now that's a little more in depth. You got to program the chip. I haven't dug into that yet, but that's what this this is. So it's most likely at the factory how they do this is they probably have a way to to program the unit to whatever real quick and fast with this chip whether they have um, through the connector whether it's you know I haven't really pulled mine apart to see if there's any solder pads on the circuit board that you know where they could solder to to quickly program this for either GMRS or any other frequency now I tried looking on the FCC's website and it's kind of hard to really zoom in on the details of the actual circuit board. I'll probably have to disassemble my R, my RT97 and um, that's probably what I'll have to do. So not a big deal but we'll do that in time. So this is um, pretty much this particular PDF file is about programming the chip um, setting and there's some cool things on here. They have a squelch uh, tail eliminator right here. So that, you know, how you, you key up the radio and you're talking on key and you hear it. Chick. Well, they could program that to not to have that from what it looks like. So I don't know why they don't have that like in the menu of the uh, Redivus. Because I know some people don't like that because it can be a, a problem when you're hooking up to Zello. And then it has that squelch tail and it, it, it re-keys up on the internet because it picks up that squelch tail. But they, they can read, you know, they could easily reprogram that from my understanding of um, this particular chip. So, at any rate, I have to confirm, and that's why I've been, re you know, I keep repeating myself. Do not take your errors apart. Do not start soldering wires on it until I confirm with either the voltmeter and or scope. I can put a scope on that pin and see if I detect audio. Um, so, I'll play with it maybe a little bit more in the next, you know, few weeks. Um, so... You know, I want to confirm that this chip, from the information I have found, is that it does cross to this RD1846 chip. So I, I, I just want to, I need to confirm that with voltages. Um, you know, we can check, like, you know, power supply pin 1. Um, you know, I'll probably get 4.8 volt on that, maybe 5 volt. Uh, you know, I can check oscillator. That's the crystal. Um, that is used for this chip and uh, you know so you can kind of compare with a voltmeter and a scope uh, if it kind of matches this pinout is what I'm trying to say so I have to c confirm that 
Um, but the mic in, that'll be easier to do. That's just going to be straight audio. So you, you, you can just use a, a oscilloscope. You don't need a fancy oscilloscope to, to detect audio. You can use, you know, anything that's, you know, 20 meg and below, for that matter. You don't need a real fancy one. Um, at any rate, so like I said, we'll, we'll definitely uh, play with this, do some more checking. But I want to put this video out there. There might be some other guys that watch my channel that um, may want to play if they have the experience in electronics and, and have the equipment, you know, then that's that's fine, you know, whatnot. Um, but that's um, what I've been kind of doing here. And like I said, you know, like I said, read all the notes too. It tells you about the power supply, the minimum voltage to the maximum voltage. And again, that, that goes with the high and low um, with the... Uh, logic gates they uh, they you know uh, is what people say so at any rate uh, if you have any uh, questions um, you know post them down below any comments um, you know go ahead and post them down there and please subscribe and thank you and have a good day